Jason here with Dirt Race Life. So I was running at Benton and I kept trying to push a tractor tire in so I could get a little more brown. Uh, the tractor tire won. Check that out. So that was my pitman arm on my steering sector. Uh, tore up my center link. Check the box. The box is good. It's still smooth. Everything's fine there, which I'm glad that bent because that's what took the impact. But I do want to show what I do to a center link across this car to make it work. Because a metric frame stock car has a terrible stock front end when it comes to how the bump steer works. They'll tow out like crazy whenever you compress the front end. Now, AFCO claims to make an improved center link that's supposed to fix all that. It's terrible too if you don't fix it. And not only that, it's nothing but an 82 Camaro center link is all it is. So I want to show you what I do to that center link to make it work much better on a metric frame car. Come check this out. All right, so here's this center link. Now this is the 1982 Camaro center link. This is exactly what AFCO is selling as the improved center link. Part number on this thing, 1049. And like if you looked on Rock Auto or any of those discount uh, parts places, you'll see a lot of different brands and they'll all end in 1049. They're all the same thing. I The first time I did buy the AFCO improved center link, um, and then when I got it in, I ordered, you know, like one of these really inexpensive ones. It's exactly the same thing. It, there's no difference. And like that AFCO one, I looked this morning, it was $108. And this one right here, I gave like $26 for y'all. I mean, this like, don't waste your money. All right. And it's still not any good because with a stock metric, you know, the, uh, the steering sector and the other arm and everything are connected on and they're closer into each other. Okay, they're, they're instead of being out here like 24 and a half inches, they're in here at like 21 something or 22. Okay, so they're closer in together. And so this does help that because these, these inner holes move out, but it causes problems because at 24 and a half inches, now your steering sector and your either arm, instead of being parallel, they're angled out. It's like a trapezoid. I can shift over and I move the idler where it's bolted up on the frame, move it over, and like this side on the passenger side is okay. But I've moved this in so much that now it just completely screws up the driver's side. So I relocate to hook the inner tie rod end into a different spot on the center link. Important note, pause right here. This is something we're doing for a race car on the racetrack. I would not do this on a car I'm gonna put on the street. Whole different level when we start talking about something you put on the street. This is racetrack stuff, not street stuff. So now where did this come from, right? And how are we gonna go about this? Well, what I do is, is I just take another center link and I just took my old one that I had, man, look how bent up that is. I wrote that thing. But I just sacrificed it off of it. So old center link, I just cut the corner out because I want to make sure I'm using the same forged material that I'm putting back. You know, I don't want to use a cast piece on a forged piece. This is all forged stuff. You know, so I cut this corner out. And if you look, you'll see I've kind of cut a wedge on it and all of that. You don't have to be perfect because, you know, your, your tie rod end has got a swivel ball. So... You don't have to have everything perfectly level or all of that. Put a spot on every corner. All right, so now I've got to you know, see how I've got that on there. And of course you can see I got the bevels down through there. And I am literally gonna take the next hour and I'm not gonna show all that, we'd be bored to death. But I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to fill it in. I'm going to have me a rag sitting here on this end and where I can just consistently quench this. When this thing starts steaming and boiling that rag up, I will just walk away and wait until it cools completely back down. And then I'll just go back to work. I will not quench this directly because I don't want for any reason to make any of this become brittle. I'm okay. If, remember, if this bent on the track, well, it's just bent. Um, you just don't never want to fracture and break it. So I'm gonna take my time put it on here I've done a couple of these now. I have very good success with these it works great And the other thing that I do 
is I'm going to fill that hole in. Why am I going to fill that hole in? Because most of the rules on center links, like a lot of street stock classes or whatever, you can run whatever street, whatever center link you want. You can do whatever you want, but it can't be adjustable. And I could see where the tech could see if you have two holes, he'd say, well, that's adjustable. You could use either of those holes. So I just fill that hole in. I'm not going to use it anyway, so I fill it in. And then I've just got a center link. And when I get done, it doesn't look like there's anything special about it anyway. So you get this knocked out. It's just going to take a while, but the end result's great. All right, y'all can see I got it all welded up, filled in my hole here. Uh, did a root pass and then a cover pass all the way around. Everything's good. And like I said, I just took a rag and kept that quenched. And then like I took a rag and put here and just kept sucking the heat out of it where it never did uh, get too hot. And like I said, I would just do like half this pass right here and then let it cool and then do another half, let it cool and in, let it cool. Did it like that right there. Totally happy with it. I'm going to take a flat disc and just kind of clean it up. Throw a little paint on it, and then we'll start putting it together, and I can show you all a couple more parts that I use here to make all this work together. All right, as I said, we are definitely replacing our Pitman arm. That is toast. Uh, so anyway, the one that I use, uh, this is a 78 to 88 G-body Pitman arm, uh, but it's got a two and a quarter inch drop. And where I found this, it's a Speedway Motors one, 910-32550. If you just order a stock replacement, uh, it will not have this two and a quarter inch drop. And so it's like from flat to flat, it's 2.25 inches of drop. That drop, you need that. Um, and like, I think if you get a stock one, it's going to be like less than two inches. It's like, I don't know, an inch and three quarters or an inch, I don't know. It's a lot less. Uh, On the outer arm, that is just a stock 78 to, G uh, 78 to 88 G body. It's the six and a quarter inch center to center. This is six and a half inch center to center on the Pittman arm. The idler is six and a quarter inch. Uh, the stock part number on the idler arm is a Moog K6187. So whatever off brand you buy it in, you look for that 6187, it'll be the right one for that. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is I move the location of the idler arm a little bit. Let me show you that. I gotta climb under the car. And you see my paint's dried here, so I can go ahead and start throwing all this together and I'll show you where I move this thing. All right, y'all see my idler right here? And it's in great, perfect condition. It's not bent up, there's no problem. I want you to look at how it's mounted. Let me come around here. All right, so here's the inside frame rail. So see my nuts? See how that the idler arm is not bolted to the outside of the frame? Look, I cut a hole through the bottom of the frame. I put some reinforcing washers on the outside right here. And the idler is going up through the bottom of the frame. And the bolts are going, you know, the bolts are going through. And you see I've got it bolted down tight on the inside instead of the outside. And yes, that definitely fixes some issues. It's simple, uh, it doesn't cost a bit more to do it, and it definitely fixes some issues when you use that 82 Camaro center link um, because you're taking some of that really weird trapezoid angles uh, where you can't square them up and you're fixing that when you do that. But you've got to move that other hole on the center link as a part of this to get this to all work out. All right, so if you do one, you do the other. It's like it all works together, but it does work. It's good. Let me get this hammer on here right quick. All right, Ryan. All right, everything looks great. All right, so when we talked about parallel, this, uh, this Pittman arm and this idler arm being parallel to each other, this being like a square box. And this is really important um, as far as Ackerman goes. If I had not moved this over, this would not be square. It would be a, a trapezoid instead of, you know, a square. It would, it would not be, in other words, like this would be like in because this would be over. So that's why that's so critical to move that over to get all of this squared up. This has got much better steering geometry than it would have if I had that in a stock position. All right, that's what's going on there. 
These inner tie rod ends, uh, look how they've got that bend in them right there. So that is a generation two Camaro, like 73 to 81 Camaros. I want this because I like how that it gives me that frame clearance and a regular, just a metric tie rod end, that's just straight across. But it does create an extra challenge because this is an 11 sixteenths on the size. It's 11 sixteenths left hand instead of being 5 eighths left hand, which would be just a metric. And so that does create a challenge because on the outside end, as far as like hind joints or an outer tie rod end or whatever we're doing there, you know, then we're going to drop to like a 5 eighths. And they make a swedge tube. I found this one place. This is a 9 inch swedge tube that is 5 eighths right hand on one end and 11 sixteenths left hand on the other. Speedway Motors has got it. Haven't found it anywhere else. I'm sure there are other people that are making this thing, but I haven't found it anywhere. I think they're around 20 bucks a piece. They're tough as nails. You know, everything else bends but this piece right here. So you buy a couple of them, you're not gonna buy any more of them unless you're really slamming walls or something. But anyway, this piece right here, I've got several of them. So inner tie rod end, then this, and then I've been having really good success with these aluminum hinds. I like them because they've got the nylon inserts and whether you get the steel or the aluminum or whatever, but I like the ones that are not greased that have got the nylon inserts in them because I seem like I run all season long and these things just stay tight. So like you see, I can move this easily, but it doesn't have any slack in it. And I like that. And yes, it's aluminum. Um, I would not use this like for example, on a rear trailing arm under pressure like that. Um, but you know, on the front, you're absolutely, yes, you can break this if you get hit really hard, but you're also destroying your front end and you're probably gonna be record off the track regardless. Um, and you know, I always carry, I just have a complete one of these made up that I'm carrying as a spare uh, anyway. Um, but yeah, I do like these, and but there's nothing wrong with the steel ones, but I like the ones with inserts uh, for the lubrication instead of like a Zerk fitting. I don't like the ones with grease. I think those get slack in them really quick. Uh, so anyway, put all this together, one on each side. Only thing I'll say about that also, I'm gonna show you, here's, I got some new ones. So let me show you one that hadn't been cut. Because, so you go to this center link that's longer, right? Everything is, everything is moved out. Well, and then like when I'm using this arm right here, I want you to look. I've prepped this one. This is a new one. See how much longer that is? See how I'm cutting that down? You're gonna have to cut these down. Even if you stayed with all metric and you use that 82 Camaro center link, you're gonna have to cut that down. It is gonna be too long because all the stock parts are designed to go to a much further point in and you fix that, you went out with it. So now you gotta have a shorter, you know, a shorter tie rod system that more matches the length of your control arm, which is good, which is good, but you gotta do some modifications. So several little things you gotta modify along the way to get this to all work. It does work, it works great, but you gotta follow the recipe and do it all. Um, so you see, I'm cutting roughly an inch, sometimes a little more. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for it to be able to just screw all the way in. That's tight, I'll have to grease that. But I'm looking to be able to thread it all the way down because what I'm finding is typically my setup will have this swedge tube where that I'm just almost down to the bottom of the threads. And I've actually had these where that I'm so close, I'll have, I'll have a lock nut on one end and maybe I can't even have a lock nut on the other end. Like it'll all just be threaded up fairly tight on that nine inch tube to get it to all work out is to where this works out um, on these. So I'm gonna get these all threaded up. I'm gonna get them on the car and then um, I'll just show you some quick bump numbers. We're not gonna make this a, a bump video. I'll put a link now to the bump video um, but, uh, but we'll just check and see where we're at. We can do that. All right, so let me set my zero here. I got my inch increments and I got my ride height set right here where I'm gonna bump in. So I'm gonna first, if an inch of extension, so if I let it on down an inch, 19,000, so that went out 19 and that went out 10. So it went, it bumped out it went out nine thousandths. So let me turn around and come back to zero. All right, so there's my level ride height. Hit zero. 
that's around it. There's an a inch of compression. 19 and 28. So that's um, in 9 thousandths. So it bumped in 9 thousandths on one inch of compression. Come up another inch. 47 and 54. So it bumped in by seven thousandths in the second inch. And then I'm going to do this third inch right here. And 63 and 80. That's 17. So in that third inch, it bumped in seventeen thousandths. So like the right front extending out an inch, bumping out nine thousandths, you know, and then turn around and coming up an inch and it bumping in nine, and then it bumps in seven thousandths on the next inch, and then it bumps in 17 on that third inch. I'm great with that. When would it be a problem? You know, when you're out there beyond, say, 20 or 30 thousandths an inch, you're really, you know, at that point, you've got some steering input going on that's actually going to, like, you're going to notice it. You're going to notice it in the car. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to create weird handling characteristics when you enter the turn. Ideal would be like you're always less than ten thousandths. That would be just golden if you're if you're that good. And on the other side, I am, you know, and I will be. I'll go through and I'll set that up. We won't do all that on camera. Like I said, I've got the videos on this. I'm linking them all up in the description of this video where you can go see all the details. Like you can see how that I built this bump steer gauge right here for pennies on the dollar compared to anything you can buy. The main thing on this is that you've got to get the center link and the, uh, the, you know, the pitman arm and all of that stuff. You gotta get that stuff right. Otherwise, you can't stack enough washers or put shims in and stuff like that out here on the end to fix it. You just can't do it. You can't do it. You have to fix the center link and stuff if you're gonna get numbers down this tight. Because I think like stock metric, you know, you're not talking 20 or 30,000, you're talking like 100,000 an inch. And so like, let me put that in terms for you. You go into the corner and you don't, t you know, you don't turn the steering wheel. You hold it perfectly straight and you roll the car over on the right front and the right front tire literally steers a half inch. Like that's what we're talking about. Let's, that's pretty crazy. So, you know, building a bump steer gauge, figuring out what it takes to get the, the, the wheel to not steer itself on its own without you putting driver input in. Pretty critical stuff, y'all. I hope this video helped and showed you how I go about accomplishing getting this figured out on my car. I will see you next time.